Now, take a big breath for our next item. You might need it for a trombone. We're heading to County Durham for a blast of brass. Brass bands have been at the heart of colliery communities, especially in the north of England, since the early 19th century. And although so many closed, the brass bands play on. Durham Brass Festival has been running for over 20 years and along with the long-standing local brass scene, it's showcasing street bands from as far afield as Cuba, Italy and Ghana, playing genres including hip-hop, Balkan and Bollywood. It follows the Miners Gala, which took place last weekend. High-profile artists taking part this year include the Poet Laureate, fronting an avant-garde rock band. Sharuna Saga went to Durham to attend rehearsals at the Gala Theatre. Uh-huh. I've just walked into the auditorium and what we can hear now are the final rehearsals for the first performance of the festival. Sunderland brothers Peter and David Brewis are better known as field music. The Mercury Prize nominated duo make melodic, experimental, esoteric pop. And by their own admission, it's not the kind of music that gets into the charts. Their latest challenge has taken them into uncharted territory with the NASUWT Riverside Band. So guys, tell me, how did this collaboration come about? We were asked to do something by the Brass Festival and for us, whenever there's an opportunity to write for different sets of instruments, we tend to take it because we like to push ourselves, we like to hear, you know, hear different things. Um, So for us, the idea that we could um, write something for that set of instruments was very exciting was originally meant to be performed at Red Hills, which is the home of the Durham Miners Association. Um, it's a really beautiful meeting room, which was the, like the Pittman's Parliament. So we started to write songs inspired by, you know, the birth of the Durham Miners Association. And, and I think when you start telling that story, what you're really looking at is the story of representation for working class people. And what about you, Peter? The idea of writing for brass, for us, seemed very experimental. (laughs) Um, But you love that kind of thing, right? Well, yeah, so we we like the idea of kind of being quite, you know, experimental, but in a playful way. Playing together is literally like us playing together. It's an extension of me and David playing you know, with Star Wars figures or Lego or something like that. So <laughs> us writing for a, for a brass band is like an extension of that experiment, that play. What's interesting about, like, the, the colliery band is that the, the instruments in the colliery band aren't the same even as orchestral brass instruments. Yeah. So in an orchestra or in a, a jazz group, you would have trumpets, but in a colliery band, you have cornets. In an orchestra, you might have a French horn. In a colliery band, you have a tenor horn. And there are are instruments like euphonium and the bass trombone, which are used pretty rarely um, in most orchestral music. It's a really unique bunch of instruments, and it's a really unique sound that they make. And I think even when we were writing the stuff, when we actually heard them play it, we were actually surprised. Um, not necessarily by how good our arrangements were, which, you know, I think we've done a decent job, <laughs> but we were surprised by the dynamics, the sound, um, the roundness of it. Um, and, you know, the guys that we're playing with are, like, hugely skilled musicians, like, scarily so. Could this be a new musical direction for the band, do you think? It's too much hard work. No. <laughs> no, it's too, it's too hard. I want to go back to just playing guitar. I'm Tony Thompson. I'm the band manager at the NESUWT Riverside Band. 
Um, I play cornet, and I've uh, played cornet for well over 50 years now. So tell me about your band, Tony, because you are champions, aren't you? Yeah, we're the uh, North of England champion band, um, which we won in this particular theatre in, in March this year. But we've actually been the champion band four out of the last five years. Your band's been going an incredibly long time, hasn't it? And you said you've been playing for 50 years. Yeah. Have you been in this band all that time? Yes, I have, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what about the history of the band? The band was formed in a mining village called Pelton Fell, which is near Chesley Street in 1875. Um, and it was a Methodist band, and it's had various um, names since then. Um, it was Pelton Fell Colliery Band, and then it was, we got a sponsorship with Newcastle Breweries, and we became the Newcastle Brown Ale Band. For 29 years we were Newcastle Brown Ale Band. And our most recent sponsor is the NES UWT Riverside Band, and since then it's enabled us to um, have our own band hall. And we built that uh, in 2010 uh, in Pelton Fell War Memorial Park. And that's given us the stability to, to progress the band. And it's become like one of the best bands in Great Britain now. So we're very, obviously very pleased about that and very proud. You've now teamed up with this rather edgy rock pop band. That doesn't happen very often, does it? No, it doesn't. Um, but this is unusual for us because normally we play as a band of 30 players. 25 brass players and five percussionists. And um, this time it's seven brass players. Only seven? Yeah, yeah. What's it like being so stripped back? It's more of a challenge because um, when you have more people, then there's more, more people cover each part. At the Miners Gala, we had 40 players yesterday. Our biggest challenge is that we, we did a lot of playing yesterday, so you can end up with a bruised lip. So when you go to play, your lip is not the same as it would be had you not done a heavy blow yesterday. So what's the answer to that? Vaseline? <laughs> <laughs> Just fingers crossed, I'll no, be fine. Oh, you're being winked at over yeah, there yeah. by one of the Brewist brothers. Does yeah, that yeah. mean you're needed? Yeah, sounds like it. You better go in and join the band. Right, OK. They need you. Yeah. <laughs> This year's festival lineup is the most ambitious and eclectic to date, mixing contemporary artists like Richard Hawley and double MOBO award winner Yolanda with international street bands and traditional colliery bands. But perhaps the most intriguing headliner of them all is LYR, a musical project featuring the current poet laureate, Simon Armitage. D for English, D for geography, D for history, D for maths. D for walking, D for thinking, D for speaking, D for breathing. We were commissioned by Durham Brass Festival to make a suite of music uh, around the Category D villages in County Durham. Uh, so in the 50s and the 60s, Durham Council commissioned a study uh, about the, the worthiness of a lot of uh, villages in County Durham once, once the mines had started to become uneconomical. And some of them were given a Category D designation, uh, which meant that the, they weren't going to be supported anymore in any way. And, and some were just left to sort of rot on the vine and, and some were actually bulldozed off the face of the earth. So we've been writing and, um, and, and sort of orchestrating the music for about eight months now and the time has come to, uh, to play it live. It's, it's exciting, it's a bit nerve-wracking as well because we haven't really played them live before. We've played them in the studio, uh, but another big element of this is that we're playing with a brass band. 
Uh, we used Marsden Band in, in my Marsden to record the work for the EP, uh, but we're playing with Easington Colliery Band on Friday night in the cathedral. Above the spinal fluid of the tide, the fire escape of the Holt Whistle Line. What drew you to this story? One thing that particularly drew me to this project is that one of the, the lost villages uh, was called Marsden. And I grew up in a village called Marsden in West Yorkshire. So I felt at, at a metaphorical level that I'd lost my, my twin village, a village that I'd never been to and will never be able to go to now because it doesn't exist. A, B, C, D, 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 I think it's been one of the most significant commissions that I've ever been involved with and one of those most satisfying. And did you ever think, as the Parrot Laureate, that you'd be fronting an ambient rock band? That's what um, it is, isn't it, yeah. LYR? Yeah, post-rock ambient, apparently, we're sometimes called, uh, whatever that means. Um, I've never been shy about my interest and associations with the world of, of music. I probably didn't think that we'd get to this stage, because when we started, it was really for a one-off project. And how are you feeling about the big performance at Durham Cathedral? Well, I, I probably should say nervous, but actually I'm just really excited about it. I think we just can't wait to get into the space now and, uh, and, and, and play in front of, you know, or, audience and God. God's on the, uh, on the VIP list. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it, otherwise there'd be trouble. Yeah. Sharuna Saga reporting. The Durham Brass Festival culminates this weekend with a series of free open-air concerts at the city centre. And Simon Armitage's LYR and the Easington Colliery Band are playing at Durham Cathedral tomorrow night.